Welcome back to Falcons Franchise. We are ready for week one after we cut 11 players or send them to the practice squad. And there are a number of players that simply won't play any role on this team. I think we're pretty strong in the secondary. Some of these players do look pretty good. Like Brett Maben, I actually see potential in. Only 61 overall, but good speed, decent zone coverage, decent acceleration. But... I mean, the likelihood is that these guys go to the practice squad and probably end up playing next to no impact on the team. Devin Tompkins, I just don't really see the point in keeping around. But we might as well send everyone that we have the option to, to the practice squad. Now, John Graves, we drafted a year ago, says apparently that he doesn't meet our standards. I thought he played pretty well last year, and I like what he looks like. Zone coverage is terrible. Traits are good. Athleticism's good. Finesse moves good but he's really just a 3-4 outside linebacker and we play a 4-3 so he's not a perfect fit for the defense however if I move him to defensive end I, I, I guess I have to but I kind of like having him be like a rush linebacker I don't want to cut him and I guess the CPU would agree because at defensive end they're like don't cut him he jumps up to a 68 overall he's got good speed He's very reminiscent of D'Angelo Malone, to be honest, but he is younger at least. I'm pretty strong at corner. Gregory Jr. just does not serve a role. I'm not going to cut Taylor Heineke. I like the, the whole deal of him being a mentor and mentoring Meeks and Lance, which actually does something. It increases their experience gain. I don't think there's a big need to hold on to four running backs. We're going to send Byrne to the practice squad. I bet Bird probably gets picked up by somebody else. But I'm fine just keeping three running backs when one is an undrafted free agent with star development. So we'll hold on to him. Certainly do not need multiple fullbacks. George Espinosa is fine. We'll send Felix Griffin to the practice squad. All right, we don't need 70 defensive linemen probably. So Daquan Jones, cut. Davion Nixon, cut. And I guess Perry and Winfrey will make the cut and not get cut. So we are now to week one, the regular season against the Miami Dolphins. This is probably going to be the one time I actually show the sliders. I get questions about them so often. I've changed them up for this season. This is what we're going with. It's mostly just all of our stuff getting subtracted and all of their stuff getting boosted for the most part for the most part now some things are are taken back slightly like pass blocking just so we can maybe sometimes generate some type of a rush even though we're never going to get any pressure anyways but those are the sliders and let's go ahead and jump in to season number three officially these are the prospects the number one player is a tackle owen ward from notre dame you have Luke Lake, who's going to be a rush linebacker from Washington State. Presumably another rush linebacker from Arkansas. Another, again, presumably rush linebacker from Georgia. Now, I say presumably. When you get to about 6'2", 240, 6'3", 240, these guys could be off-ball linebackers, you know, cover guys. But for the most part, I expect them to be pass rushers. However, in the case of Christopher Hill, at just 234 pounds, he's certainly light to be a rush player but he probably will be get a quarterback in there from lsu another defensive tackle it seems to be a very front seven heavy draft and some tackles on the other side but that's usually what we get in the actual draft right a couple of quarterbacks in there as well now didn't see any receivers really didn't see a whole lot of corners it was really just defensive ends outside linebackers and offensive tackles and quarterbacks that was really it our season goal is going to be making the playoffs per usual. That is always our goal. And our key to winning opening day, I would say, is an offense that can dominate. Ideally, we establish a rhythm on offense, dictate the flow of the game, and get a big enough lead to make their offense one-dimensional. So, yeah, if we can force them to pass, I do feel pretty good about it. And usually, I, I do like our running game. If we focus on running the damn football and we're able to do that successfully, there are going to be a few teams that can beat us. Our offensive line continues to get better. We bring in Jedrick Wills in free agency. Not a great run blocker. I'm going to be really interested to see how well he plays. But the offensive line, for the most part, they're developing slowly but surely. And we have Bijan Robinson, who is, of course, going to be a big-time difference maker and just 
pretty easily the best player on our team most of the time. And did I already set different scouts? I didn't. It just happened to line up for a couple of these. So I think I'm pretty much going to leave a lot of these as is. I like that right end and left end are strengths of the class. That's pretty much always going to be positions of need for any team, and especially us. But it's it's so many defensive ends and outside linebackers. It's almost unbelievable. Well, now that the scouts are assigned, I'll tell you, there's one thing we're going to know a lot about in this cycle, and that is about the edge rushers. Outside linebacker and defensive end, there will be absolutely no shortage of information when it comes to those guys. And we do have Arnold Epicady. We did just spend a top pick in the draft on an edge rusher, but it's still going to always be a position of focus for us. You can never really have enough good ones. And after this game, we're going to learn the development traits a lot of these younger players. Deion Dobbins was our first pick. We're kind of developing him to be a finesse rusher, but his power moves is good as well. He's just a well-rounded player, and I think he's going to end up being a really nice fit in our defense. Hope he ends up making a ton of plays. We have a lot of rookies playing today, making their NFL debut. Deion Dobbins at defensive end. At defensive tackle, you're going to see the 382-pound beast that is Johnny Hamilton. At linebacker, you might see some Dylan Stanley. You might also see some Jose Carrington, not to mention his brother, Jason, who we could see getting on the field at some point, the six foot four corner out of Michigan State. Now, you might see George Johnson on special teams, but that's pretty much the rookies on defense. And then on offense, I do not expect to see Jake Meeks from Texas Tech. It's going to be Trey Lance as my starting quarterback and that wide receiver. I do expect to see a healthy dose of Quinton Drummond from LSU. Now, what does that exactly mean? We'll have to see. He's got some good speed. He's got some good run after catch. And his spectacular catch rating is great despite not having the trait. We're going to see how much we can get him on the field. And no, I am not changing his number. I don't care about Matt Ryan. Quinton Drummond is wearing number two. And with my final available staff points, I will purchase the final after school tutoring slot, giving us full maxed out six focus players in practice. And I guess we might as well just do the rookies here. Our top six rookies will all be focus players. Now, it might be wise to drop somebody out and throw in Trey Lance. I think I'm actually going to end up doing that. Jason Carrington, I would say, is the lowest on the depth chart and also the highest overall or one of them. So I feel like it kind of makes sense to drop him out. And we're going to change that to our starting quarterback, the 25-year-old Trey Lance. And we have actually an upgrade for the rookie linebacker, Dylan Stanley. I think he's going to be taking over for Caden Ellis as Caden Ellis continues to regress. And this was a great pickup for us. He's got great speed, tackling, and hit power. And he's yet to play in a regular season NFL game. So this is someone I'm really, really excited about. I think his potential is off the charts. And I'm going to upgrade Field General, get him up to a 75, playing up to a 76 overall. So he looks fantastic right now. Coverage improving, block shedding going up, and tackle even getting a boost. Block shedding, probably the biggest thing I want to upgrade right now. But here we go. Tyree Hill, Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Waddle. It's a very good Dolphins team that you're really accustomed to. But at this point, Devon A. Change could play a pretty big factor in this game. He's up to an 84 overall with, of course, star development. He's been very good. And there's just a lot of speed. When you play the Dolphins, that's the biggest concern. There is a lot of speed. They assembled a track team, and that includes Devon A. Chain, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill. And then, you know, depending on if Raheem Mostert's still in there, I mean, Jeff Wilson, just the fastest players Miami could find. It's Al Davis's wet dream is what the Miami Dolphins have assembled. And speaking of wet dreams, it looks a little bit wet here in Miami. Drain or drizzle rain coming down maybe I don't know don't see any I hate playing in the rain but those other backs are off the team it really just is Devon A. Chain remember they drafted Mitchell McCord 76 overall rookie tight end with fantastic speed and also have a converted wide receiver Elijah Higgins playing tight end he was uh, I believe Stanford he was a receiver at Stanford and now plays tight end so this is still a very very good team with a bunch of very good players and the entire offensive line is very much improved the defense has stayed about the same they do have the rookie middle linebacker Rocco Reynolds from USC starting alongside Mac Wilson who we might see Jalen Ramsey still out there Cam Smith who has like the tiniest head I've ever seen somehow in the game and then Clyde Levine from Auburn 
Isaiah Simmons back at strong safety. It's a very interesting team. And here come the Dolphins. We have a bunch of rookies everywhere, but we have speed to match. Not quite as fast as what the Dolphins have. We still have good speed, but if Devon A. Chain is going to be breaking tackles, we might have a long day. We have a lot of rookies out here, you know, still developing their technique of tackling the ball carrier for getting about arm tackles. So if A. Chain is going to be running through tackles, he's going to find daylight. He's going to end up taking one of the house. We have to limit that and we have to tackle, you know, at first contact. And there is the rookie not making a tackle. That's Cade Nellis. Don't worry about it. But I could see Dylan Stanley working in. We're just going to get a really healthy rotation of linebackers with Deshaun Humphreys, Jose Carrington, might be some Dylan Stanley, uh, might be as well some Cade Nellis. And there is Tyreek Hill over the middle for 26 yards. Kind of just got caught flat-footed with Jose Carrington, and that's not something you can do against this Dolphins offense. You kind of just have to commit and hope that you made the right decision. And Devon A. Chain actually a little bit slow to get up after a short run. They're working on what appears to be that left knee, left lower leg at least. A. Chain appears to be in some serious discomfort. And their depth at linebacker, or at running back, excuse me, is not great. So we saw it was really just Devon A. Chain. Outside of that, not really a ton of talent as Waddle cannot catch the football. And it'll be third and nine. If we can get Devon A. Chain off the field maybe slide an extra game check in whoever injures him. A little bounty gate action. I think we're going to have a pretty good time in this game and make their offense one-dimensional as Jeff Okuda does not animate on the football. I pressed X. Deflect the ball. What are we doing? He just watched it. It's really pretty much perfect position. And you see, he wants to go up and do something. He just doesn't. It's always something with this game, dude. Always something. Oh, that's unbelievable. That should be a pick or a deflection at the very least. I pressed Y at first and I go, no, let's play it safe. Let's go for the deflection. And he just didn't do anything. Unreal. This is the first touch for the rookie receiver, Quentin Drummond. He's going to be our return man. And it makes sense. Might see Rashid Shaheed returning punts, but Drummond has so much speed, is so good after the catch. This is somebody you just want to get the football in his hands as much as you possibly can. We traded up for him, I think at number 10 overall or something around then. So, you know, this is obviously someone we like quite a bit. We think he'd be a playmaker for us. And I want to get him on the field as much as possible. Although Rashid Shaheed starts over him for now. We go to three wide receiver sets. You might see some more of Quentin Drummond, and there is Kyle Pitts. We're in a new offense this year that should hopefully complement multiple tight end setups, a lot of 12 personnel. So hopefully, along with Kyle Pitts, we also still see a lot of Neil Madsen, but also a lot of running the football. You see Quentin Drummond's on the field. This package does not include multiple tight ends. And there goes Bijan Robinson. And there is a big injury, Kyle Pitts. Injured on the play, that's a big loss. It's a big loss. It's probably our best overall receiver. His right wrist appears to be in some discomfort. So Neil Madsen going to have to play a little bit more. And that might, in fact, force some other receivers onto the field a bit more. Here's second and nine. Kind of feel forced to throw. And we are running into a sack. Lance coughed up the football. This is not NCAA. I have to stay in the pocket and make a throw. And we just rolled right into pressure. Huge mistake. Luckily, luckily... Uh, Chris Lindstrom falls on the football, but it is third and very long. No Kyle Pitts. We're going to take a shot deep, and that is not deep enough, and that is knocked down by Jalen Ramsey, who is shadowing the rookie, Quentin Drummond in the slot. That's an interesting matchup to keep an eye on, and it's a shoulder strain for Pitts. We're going to play it on the safe side, keep Madsen in, but by the time we get the football back, you might see Kyle Pitts back out there. So we'll punt it away. Not great from our offense. But very good punt, at least. Tyreek Hill does actually get a chance to return. Does break a tackle as well. And then pays the price. Troy Anderson rocked. And we have so many good linebackers now. I love it. Even John Graves working out onto the field. See, this is why I didn't want to cut him. He definitely serves a role, especially as a blitzer. And Caden Ellis is right there for the breakup. Oh, that's wide open. A.J. Terrell burned by Beeson. A rookie just... Torching A.J. Terrell. 
Devon A. Chain back on the field, by the way. He's wide left. Tua going out of empty. That's a throw over the middle, and it's going to be caught by the rookie tight end, McCord, for three yards. Humphreys, I guess, touched him down at some point because they whistled it dead immediately like it's college football, and it is third down and five. We didn't really commit to anything there. Big throw over the middle, and Jesse Bates can't jar the football loose. It's Lawrence on the catch. You know, you expect to play the Dolphins to get beat by Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, but it's these random guys making an impact on this drive. And part of why the Dolphins are so dangerous, Tua under pressure, looking for that first sack, throw to the end zone, Terrell in coverage and incomplete. I don't know what was going on there, chaos. Thought Deion Dobbins might have recorded his first NFL sack. He's going to be in a two-point stance on this one. See if he can beat Teron Armstead. Epic Katie goes to left end to try to beat the other superstar tackle on this team. Here's a throw to the flat. Okuda takes out the legs. And it is third down and six. Play over the middle. Tua looking to run. Carrington's there and cannot bring him down. Tua scrambles for the first down after breaking a tackle. Falcons right in his face. Tua fighting back. What is happening in Miami? Something's in the water. They're going crazy. Wouldn't, wouldn't shock me if it was snowing in Miami on this particular day. From the 14 now, here's a pitch to the outside. Caden Ellis in pursuit. Can't get there. Big spin move by Achan. And Devon Achan brings it down inside the five. I might want to get Dylan Stanley out there. Get a little bit more speed at linebacker. I think that could make a really big difference. Caden Ellis is the vet. He's had a couple of big seasons for us. But especially right there. I think it's evident he's not only lost a step, but lost some play strength as well, and A-Chan is into the end zone for the score. Miami on the board first, and we gotta play better. They're gonna extend their lead to 14. Gotta play better. Madsen stays in for pitch. We're actually gonna go to him quickly, and he's got great speed. There's Neil Madsen, and we saw some big games from him last year. Has not had an opportunity to go up to star dev yet. Apparently, if he has a big game, I just have to make him tight end one and then simulate the week so the game actually registers that he's someone that is worthy of potentially getting a dev trade upgrade as we're going to continue to work off play action here. Hit that second level. There's Drake London. Why do I even throw it to this guy? Like, what is even happening there? He's open. We make an accurate throw, and Drake London does some David Copperfield magic to get out of the way of the football. It's almost impressive how fucking bad this guy is. How does he not catch this? It goes under his armpit. How do you miss the ball? This is an NFL receiver with hands that are simply not functioning. It's like someone has attached noodles to the end of shoulders and he just flails them around wildly. They can't catch the ball. They can't even touch the ball. And it's second and ten. Ramsey blitzing. We're going to target Quentin Drummond as a result, and he can't catch it. it, it it's Jalen Ramsey consistently on Quentin Drummond, and I don't like it. I was looking to take advantage of some of these other DBs. We're going to go to Madsen. That's a great throw, and there goes Neil Madsen. Right up the middle. That might be our guy today. You know, running the ball, I haven't done it a ton, hasn't worked a ton. But play action passing has been really really good for us i know that wasn't play action i'm just saying in general there goes Bijan though there's a little bit of space we'll get maybe three or four jalen ramsey continues to shadow quentin drummond here's third and five we're gonna go outside and that's gonna be nearly intercepted ball came out way too late notice the blitz thought maybe drummond would be open work back down to drake london london was actually open initially and we threw it just too late and we're gonna have to settle for three luckily not an interception and it surely would have been a pick six if he caught it. Dodged a bullet there. Another missed opportunity, but man, I'm counting my blessings. That was not a pick six. That would have been devastating because that's 21 nothing. Instead, it's 14-3. That would have been a massive swing. And, uh, geez. Got to play better defense for sure, but it looks like our offense is also going to be a problem today. It's actually play action here. AJ Terrell on Jalen Waddle. See, this is the problem. Jeff Okuda does not have the speed to keep up with Jalen Waddle. He gets the edge and he's gone. And that's the type of thing we've seen Jalen Waddle do a bunch, especially at Alabama. 
He just has the incredible speed to eliminate pursuit angles. And we've seen it with Tyreek Hill time and time again, obviously. There are four defenders that really have a shot to get Jalen Waddle. Terrell's right there. And then no one is able to wrap him up. No one's able to make a play. Jeff Okuda certainly doesn't have the speed to be able to do it. And already we're going to have to make some adjustments. And I'm, I'm committed to making them. So here's what's going to happen. Clark Phillips is off the field. Jeff Okuda is in the slot. Jason Carrington is going to play wide corner when we have three corners on the field. That's the change I'm making. Need more speed, more size, and Carrington's coming in. Dylan Stanley also going to come in for Cade Nellis. Our main sub linebackers right now, we're going to try out to Sean Humphreys and Jose Carrington. And then you guys saw the change made at cornerback as well. So we got to do something to combat what they're doing. And right now what they're doing is just being better and faster than we are. Got to figure out a way around that. Kyle Pitts remains... No, he is on the field now. We just have a three tight end set where Fitzpatrick is the main target here. I'm going to switch that so that it's Kyle Pitts. I feel like that makes a bit more sense for us. And if we have time here to work off play action, make a big time throw, this is an absolutely huge play. But that's wide open. We lobbed it over, or at least I wanted to. It ends up being a bullet pass because I can't get the timing down in this game. Thankfully, it's completed. We find John Fitzpatrick, who I was changing the play to go around so it would go to Kyle Pitts. But Fitzpatrick ends up being the best option for us as we're going to find B. John Robinson. And that is probably his best run of the game for five yards. Third and one. I'm just going to count on the interior of my offensive line. Push through. Give Bijan a chance. And he's actually shut down. I just don't get how he doesn't have the forward momentum to run through a defensive tackle there. It's fourth and inches from the 40. We're going for it. We're bringing in the power back, Algier. And hopefully we can actually just surge ahead here and get this. And that's exactly what happens. Now, there was a wide open lane and the CPU kind of took over the running back there, Algier, and made him jump cut, which I do not particularly care for. I guess because the the center who was combo blocking dropped back underneath and started pass blocking, essentially. That's so stupid. He would never step back here. When you combo block, you get up and then get up and over to get to the next guy. You don't drop back and take steps into the lane where your running back is coming. Thankfully, it works out for us, but that's just so stupid. Beyond annoying. See what we can do here. I'm, I kind of just want to keep it on the ground on first and ten. Kind of getting some NCAA vibes, or just run the ball. Passing's a bad idea. And if you're not watching my NCAA series, people are loving Riverside. I appreciate you guys watching it. It's been a ton of fun so far. The team sucks right now, but we're working on it. And um, I would check it out if you haven't checked it out already. As we're going to try to make a lob throw to Drake London. And maybe that's why you throw it to him. Is Sometimes he's capable of making a, t a tough catch. And that's essentially what that was. It was not exactly where it needed to be. And maybe he didn't make the catch. Because Miami's going to throw the red challenge flag. And Mike McDaniel says that left foot came down out of bounds. There's one. There's two. I think, I think that's two. I think that third one doesn't matter. And that should be upheld. And it is. A little scary there. Really bad challenge because it, it ultimately didn't end up looking that close at all. Here's first and ten. Shahid wide open. We're going to throw it to him and Rashid Shahid has the first down. Starting to heat up a little bit here on offense. We need a score right now. That's the thing. Now, I don't want to give Miami any time to answer. But that's not really a concern right now. We just need to find our way into the end zone. And hopefully Bijan can help us do that. I think we are going to end up playing like this is the last possession of the first half. Second and eight. They can score really quickly, but I'm, I'm pretty much just trying to end the first half here. There's Bijan Robinson. There's a stiff arm. He's knocked out of bounds, which I think is going to stop the clock here inside five minutes. No, it actually doesn't. And that is the two minute warning. So it's third and inches. Definitely want to move the chains. If we get into the end zone, I, like that's fine. But I'd ideally prefer us to get about half a yard here and then waste a little bit more clock. But obviously we're just trying to, you know, do whatever we can to move the chains. But that ends up being a great play for us. 
We're going to take more time off the clock. And Miami probably has about a minute to answer. Kind of the same goal. Like, don't really want to get into the end zone here, but also we need a touchdown. So the points are primary. Clock management in that spot is secondary. Bijan gets into the end zone. First touchdown of season three for your Atlanta Falcons. And starting to build a little bit of momentum. Blocking was great on that play. Bijan goes untouched for seven. Jalen Waddle, two catches, two touchdowns, or three catches. No, it wasn't two catches, two touchdowns, or three. I didn't know if that said targets or not, thinking back on it. I think it was three catches, two touchdowns. We got some new players in the game now. Here's a quick throw to A-Chan. And his speed is on display. Yeah, they're going to have no problem getting down the field in a hurry. Two has eight completions for close to 200 yards. Obviously, a lot of that courtesy of Jalen Waddle. And we're going to see if we can fix that. Under a minute to play. I thought they were trying another screen. And it's because they are. There's Dylan Stanley, who dives at nothing. But thankfully, the rookie Jason Carrington is there to make the tackle. We just need to keep them off the scoreboard until the until the halftime whistle, please. A field goal wouldn't kill us, but ideally no points. Under 10 seconds to play. Tua not snapping the football. If they catch it, and he's just going to throw it away. Bizarre. So they're going to end up settling for a field goal try here. It's not that short of one. This is from the 44-yard line. It's going to be a 54-yard field goal. No gimme. And that is wide left. Obviously, horrendously managed by the Dolphins and Mike McDaniel in that first half. That's just Madden for you. Clock management, they're just brain dead. I don't know how they have not fixed that. Years and years and years, the CPU has no idea of when to call timeouts at all. But we did our job enough. We kept them off the scoreboard. A field goal wouldn't have been the worst thing, but obviously no points uh, is preferred. And I think we get the football to start the second half. So run inside. And what do we even do to defend the Dolphins? Defend medium pass, I guess. Kind of where I feel like we've been getting torn apart. And here we go. Third quarter underway. Down by 11. Still very much in the game. And a nice return there from Drummond gets us an extra two yards. First and 10, working off play action. I think it works to perfection. There's Kyle Pitts on the sideline. Throw brought him out of bounds, but it is a huge completion to start. Nice big time play. We're already to midfield. And Miami gonna throw another challenge flag here on the sideline. Mike McDaniel has an obsession with losing timeouts. And I think a knee hits, I think an elbow hits. I think two feet are down. This surely cannot be overturned. This is a catch. This is a catch. Yeah, it is. Dude, Mike, Mike McDaniel having a really bad game and his playmakers are making up for it. He's been an idiot so far. Here's first and 10. Rolling out, throwing on the run. Trying to find Drummond. Can't hit him. Here's second and 10. Who do we go to here? I don't really like the options. Lance going to throw it away. It's third and 10. All right, Drummond's going to come in motion. And of course, Ramsey going to shadow him. He actually leaves him. And we're going to get sacked. Doing a lot of watching on that. Fourth and 19 after the Wilkins sack. That's not the way we wanted to open up half number two. Brutal. What's the mood? We just blitz Tua? Make him make quick decisions. They can't burn us down the field that way? I don't really know. All I do know is that Jason Carrington in his debut is all over the field so far. And this is not even a guy who is starting. We subbed him on. And now all of a sudden we have corners making tackles the first time. I like it. Here's second and six. Stanley getting blocked out of the play. And there goes A-Chan for a first. Blitzing. There's Dylan Stanley showing the speed. Straight up the middle for the sack on to our first sack of the game. Comes here in the third quarter. And the rookie linebacker out of Stanford gets in there. Makes a big time play. And it's second and 14. They didn't lose a ton of yards or anything on that. But it's still a nice play. We might send some heat again. Maybe we can pick this right tackle, get Deion Dobbins a one-on-one. -on -one. Nice tackle from the new Falcon, Javon Holland. Dolphins only able to pick up a couple of yards. I think with all the stuff that happened in the draft, it's easy to kind of forget about that big free agent signing. But our safety should be really good. We should be really strong at the back end. 
Jesse Bates obviously has struggled, but maybe a lot of that was because of Richie Grant. Maybe now with Javon Holland back there, he's going to be making all types of plays. We'll have to see. All I know is we force a punt, and a touchdown makes it a one-possession game, and so too does a field goal, I guess. But we'd need a two-point conversion to tie, and I'd prefer a touchdown, honestly. There's Rashid Shahid. Finds a little bit. Play action. Kyle Pitts just continues to be open on these crossers. Gotta love it. And I came in with the goal of actually running the ball. I'm telling you, these play action passes continue to be the best way to do it. Okay. I'm running the ball, not it today. 12 for 29 for Bijan. Does have the touch. And Clark Phillips is injured. Man, what are we going to do without him? Here's second and 13. I need, I need somebody to get down the field. Give us a spark plug. Shahid can't catch it. We're going to try Drummond over Shahid. They both have the same speed. Drummond is more agile, higher acceleration. Lower brake tackle, but higher trucking. Higher change of direction, lower ball carrier vision. But higher stiff arm, higher spin. Lower juke. Shahid does have 85 catching as well. I mean... Shahid is better in the slot. I'm going to see what Quentin Drummond's capable of. And uh, Jalen Ramsey continues to follow him. Third and 13. I'm just going to check down. I would say this is about four down territory. And our starting left guard is injured. Matthew Bergeron. So as he jogs to the locker room, we're going to have to be forced to make another change. And that's going to be... The rookie center, Will Hart, to center. And Riley Wheeler to left guard until Matthew Bergeron's injury is known. We are going to go for it here. I don't really want to run a tight end screen, though. How about Y sale? Force the ball to Kyle Pitts. Maybe Drummond comes across the field late. I could see Bijan being open. I wish we were on the other hash. I'm going to throw it to Bijan. Make somebody miss. Gosh, they closed down so quickly. Uh, abdominal tear. Bergeron's done. Great. Well, I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't hate throwing a Bichon. I thought we had a pretty good matchup here. But, yeah, I just I didn't read this DB in time. He started to crash down as I was throwing it. Or just about. So I thought Bichon was just be able to run at the sideline uh, pretty easily. And that's not what ended up happening. Was anyone else going to get open? Maybe Drake London if I held onto the football for long enough? It seems like there's pretty good coverage, but I didn't really give us a chance. But I'll tell you, I have no problem with going for it there. A punt, what's the point? 20 yards of field position? Maybe a bit more if you're lucky, as Deshaun Humphreys can't make the tackle, nor can Jesse Bates. But Dylan Stanley is there, and A-Chan is short. Maybe injured again? He is back out there. It's third and two. Could easily see a run here. But they're going to throw. And they're going to throw for the first down. Oh, that's going to be a big play. Okay, McCord just gets open. How did he get by my entire defense? Did I bring someone out of the way? I actually just want to look at this again. So we blitz with Stanley. Leaving McCord open. And then Okuda... I guess I thought I was switching on to Jesse Bates. So we dragged him down. Bates get blocked out of the way. Ooh, unlucky. But yeah, I guess that's on me for moving Okuda out of the way half an inch, and that was all it took. I don't know why I thought in my head that was a touchdown. It's first and goal from the six. We could still hold him to a field goal here. Here's a run. Carrington can't make the play. That's the linebacker out of Tennessee, Jose Carrington. Not his older brother Jason to approach the end of the third quarter I think we only have one Carrington on the field right now it is Jose again fullback dive up the middle somebody made the tackle I don't know who that was it was tough to even see they're going to credit to Sean Humphreys it would appear and here is third and goal I'm expecting a pass shut it down somebody make a play over the middle. Tua going to run. And Tua is shut down short of the goal line. 
That was really close, but that is the end of the third quarter. Looks like the Dolphins might keep the offense on the field. I could see why they would do this. It's a two-possession game already. A field goal keeps it a two-possession game. I think it's wise to go for it and try to make it a three-possession game. But it also, you know, keeps us right in if we're able to get a stop. And they're actually going to throw. Tua under pressure. Throwing to the end zone. Terrell is there, but cannot force the incompletion. Touchdown, Tyreek Hill. He just had too much space. You know, A.J. Terrell tried to close it down, but just couldn't do it in time. And we just couldn't get the two. I mean, he makes an unbelievable running throw backwards. Great effort. It was actually Jesse Bates, not A.J. Terrell, excuse me. Jesse Bates. Now I'm starting to see why it may have been a touchdown. Okay, we have the entire fourth quarter to try to get back in this game. The Dolphins, the Dolphins have kind of outclassed us today, unfortunately. And oh man, I thought we could have created some magic there. I don't know that we're passing enough. We gotta do something differently. Here's a run. Finally, some space for Bijan. He's not really been able to make a ton of guys miss in the open field today. And it's not like we've really spent a lot of time in the open field anyway. But we're running out of time. Double covering Kyle Pitts. Might be blitzing. Could create an opportunity for somebody else to make a play. We'll see what they end up doing. Pitts is wide open. Quick throw to Pitts. And he's actually not going to stay on his feet. Goes down at about the 33. We try a screen here. Snap the football. They're not ready for it. Jailbreak screen. There's Drummond. Big hit, but he holds on. Something Shahid was not able to do earlier. Third and six. Who wants to get open? Is it Bijan Robinson? It is, but he drops it. Guess it doesn't end up being super open. We lead him right into Sione Taki Taki. And it's fourth and six. Similar idea with this play. Just Bijan's going on a table route as opposed to kind of the Texas route. Pitts is open. Lance. Missed him. Let go of the button too early. Huge miss. Had a touchdown on fourth down. Instead, we have a turnover. Well, we jumped off sides. That was Johnny Hamilton. Amazing he can jump it all at 382 pounds. And Devon A. Chan broke off a pretty big run, so they have the ball on the 19-yard line. And it's not great. Nice tackle there from Kyrie Yankee for the run stop. And that's a touchdown. Tyreek Hill burns Jeff Okuda. We are struggling. Third and two. Love the check down to Bijan. Hasn't worked once today. Keep going to it. Idiot. Fourth and two. See if we can convert. Actually have room to run there with Trey Lance. And he fought for the first down and got it somehow. I don't know how they were able to close down the gap. It looked like that was pretty wide open to me. And then didn't end up being that way. Just lobbing up. We're going to throw a pick there. I see Jalen Phillips in coverage. I go, oh, maybe I, I throw it down the field to my big time tight end Kyle Pitts. Nope. Jalen Phillips is looking like what Jesse Bates should look like on my team. It's an interception. It's a brain-dead one, but the game's already over, and if Kyle Pitts did what I told him to do, and Trey Lance delivered an accurate ball, a lot of ifs here, but things might have been nice there. Rolled out, sent Kyle Pitts up the field. Jalen Phillips is just shadowing him. And then Kyle Pitts goes, I'm bored of going up the field. I'm going to run over across to doing nothing. Just if I say go up the field, don't get ideas of your own. Second and eight. Game's wrapped up at this point. Not really even bothering calling timeouts. Uh, we couldn't tackle today. We couldn't fill lanes. We couldn't be in the right spot. The Dolphins were way too good and way too fast. And our offense was completely trash. Couldn't run the ball. Consistently couldn't throw the ball well. We had things that were working. As John Graves makes a nice tackle. We'll call a timeout. Whatever. They're going to go for it. Okay. But we just, we kind of stopped doing those things. The play action passes to the tight ends were working. And that got out of our playbook extremely quickly. Great tackle from Jose Carrington. We'll see if we can make some type of drive. It's all about the play action 
misdirection and getting crossers involved. That's how you find success. Dig wide open. There's Rashid Shahid. We'll call a timeout. I just think, okay, you know, first game with a new playbook, okay. We're going to make some mistakes. But also, you know, we, we stopped doing what worked. And I really feel like, you know, I could have had a ton of good drives that actually kept us in this game. But I kept doing stupid, dumb stuff. Dumb things, you know, bad play calls that really didn't give us a chance. We had things that were effective, and look at this drive. Maybe don't look at this drive. L look, look, look anywhere else. Oh my God, Dylan Stanley hits Tua after the kneel. Those flags are flying. A brawl's breaking out at the end of the game if that happens in real life, especially to Tua. Are you kidding me? Dylan Stanley's getting mobbed by the O line. Probably a couple fans, too. But that is the game. We looked terrible. Gotta be better. 35-10 is your final. Yeah, we're gonna look to bounce back in week two. Not a great start. Uh, the Dolphins are good. They've got big-time playmakers on offense. We obviously really struggled to contain Tua. And, you know, the, the playmakers. Even Devon Achan annihilated us. Eight broken tackles. 145 yards rushing and then receiving. There's Kyle Pitts. He had a nice game, but Tyreek Hill had two touchdowns. Jalen Waddle had two touchdowns. And Jalen Waddle did only have two catches. Two for 105 and, and two touchdowns. Hill, three for 47, two touchdowns. Couldn't stop Achan is what it came down to, really. Number of players with TFLs in there. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of those are Dolphins. Three for us, Jose Carrington, Kyrie Yankee, and Dylan Stanley. Sack for Stanley and no interceptions. We were just dominated by Tua and Achan. Bijan with an upgrade. He becomes a 99 overall again. 98 overall power back. Get a small upgrade to break tackle and trucking. Yeah, 35-10, man. Just not our game, evidently. Bijan's not sure how we didn't get it done. Did you not show up to the game? Partially, I guess. But I'm pretty sure how we didn't get it done. Seems pretty obvious to me. Now, the injury could end up being tough. Bergeron's going to miss some significant time. These are just practice injuries to backups. Not really going to matter a whole lot. But the Matthew Bergeron injury is kind of big. Because that's going to force a rookie center to start. Riley Wheeler back to left guard. And we have a pass-protecting center... That's bad. I mean, he's a center whose his pass protection is quite poor. But this is what the team's going to look like. Wheeler to left guard. Again, Wheeler to left guard. Hart starts at center. Drummond, he just didn't do anything. I can't really start him over Shahid. Maybe in the slot. And then defensively, the dev trait for Deion Dobbins is officially revealed. It is just star. Carrington has also had his dev trait get revealed. It is also just star, which is not a surprise, but Dobbins, I was hoping for more. We know that Hamilton will be superstar if you watch the preseason episode. And then Jose Carrington, I think is going to be just star as well. Can't say for certain on that, but probably just star as well. So a lot of stars. Maybe Drummond or Meeks brings it back with Superstar. Maybe Hart has Superstar. That'd be awesome. And I think Dylan Stanley now is just going to get the start over Caden Ellis. He looked not great in the one quarter we really let him play. Week two will face the Seahawks and look to bounce back. You know, every, with every team we face, we have expectations. And I, I think the Dolphins, unfortunately, lived up to my expectations there. The Seahawks, I think, are going to be a little bit easier to stop. However, Kenneth Walker is quite good. That is a significant issue. If we struggle to tackle Devon Achan, Kenneth Walker could be a big problem. We'll see what happens. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.